Hi, in this exercise we're going to talk about using the Network Analyst Toolbar. The Network an Analyst Toolbar is an effective set of tools in which we can compute driving times, look at distances, driving distances, other things like that. In this scenario, we're going to put a pizza place, a pizza shop in the down first floor of the Marytown Science Complex, and we're going to deliver to all places within five minute driving time of our campus right here. You can see Alston Street, Fayetteville Street, Concord Street, and we're going to be located right over here or so. That's going to be a little bit distant to, different than using our geoprocessing tools. With our geoprocessing tools and buffers, we just create a five mile buffer, and that's going to be just look like a gigantic circle in, in essence. Okay, this is going to, with driving time, it's going to look a little bit different. So we're going to take advantage of our network analyst toolbars in order to do this. Before we even look at these network analyst toolbars, we're going to have to create a network. And even before we create a network, I've gone through the, the help right here in terms of creating a network data set, and I follow the directions myself. And I created some fields here that'll make us do this analyst analysis a little bit quicker. You can see these are the attributes for all my for all of my roads here. And I have one here called minutes and miles. And I actually copy this from travel uh, miles travel and minutes traveled. And I have a field and attribute one called minutes one called miles. So when I run through the wizard that tries to extract these different impedances in terms of what is it going to cost me to drive on this road, kind of like our least cost analysis that we may have talked about in our class, you'll see this. Because what we're going to do in our Geography 4010 class is we're going to try to compute this driving time. We're going to try to fight site fire stations throughout the county. And Euclidean distance isn't going to be a really big deal. Even your driving distance is going to be a big deal. Your driving time is going to be a big deal. And you can see here, using our formula, distance equals rate times time, you can see my distance of this particular segment of road is 1.758, uh, and our driving time is going to be twice that because our speed limit here is 30. And we can look at some different examples right here. With four, We can look at the diff relationship between the minutes traveled and the miles traveled. And you can see those. There's probably a couple instances where we have driving to, uh, speed limit of 60, and you'll see that's equal to the driving time since there's 60 minutes an hour and um, 60 minutes an hour. Okay, so driving one mile per minute is the same as driving 60 miles per hour using that conversion factor there. Okay, so it's important that you have minutes and you have miles, so my wizard will go through and capture those. So I'm going to right mouse click here on my transportation. And you'll see here I have a transportation feature data set and a census, uh, and a, a census uh, feature data set. If I right mouse click here and click on new, you notice I can't create a transportation network here, a network. So it has to be done within the feature data set. So I have a network data set here. I'm just going to call it network data set underscore ND. I'm going to use my roads and click next. Uh, do I want a model turn? Sure. Next. Um, do I want a metal elevation? Probably not. That's not going to be important for drive time. And you'll see here, it captured different attributes here. One's called miles. The units are going to be miles. That's going to be some of the cost. Another's called minutes. And the units are going to be minutes. So that's going to be my cost. Okay. When I drive along a segment of road, I want to drive up to five minutes or up to five miles or a certain distance okay, or a certain time. What we care more about is driving time. There's one way here we have, uh, I'll probably just remove this since it is important. Do I want to establish directions? Probably not in this instance here. Click next and finish. And it's going to create my network data set. I'm going to give it a second here. Do I want to build it now? Sure. Okay. And when we add it, we're going to be, you're going to see it's going to be added into my table of contents over here. And I've got a couple things I need to do and I can easily run this. Okay, I'll give it a second. Sure. All right. Do I want to add all these? Of course. Okay, and you can see the vertices for my for this here. You can see my roads, and you can see the edges that I've added here. And I'll just kind of unclick those. So now in my network analyst toolbar, what I want to do is create a new service area. You can see I can create a new route between two things. Find the closest facility do a new vehicle routing problem, do a location allocation. Here I'm just going to look at a new service area. Okay, 
And what I'm going to do is highlight my network analyst window, and you can see I'm going to have to add facilities. Now, there's a couple way that a couple ways that I can add them here. So if you're working in my Geography 4010 class, I can just right mouse click on my facilities and load locations from an existing feature data set, such as of uh, such as say fire stations, or I can create my own here. Okay, so I can add facilities from something that's already existing, or I can kind of create my own. What I'm going to do here is just I'm going to put my pizza place right here. So I can see right here this is Con uh, Fayetteville Street here. This is Concord Street here, and then our campus is right at the sea right here. This our um, buildings right at the sea. So I'm going to just create a network location tool right here. And I'm going to stick it right there. Okay, and you can see it's been highlighted right here, and now in my facilities, I it's been graphic pick one. If we were to load these locations from fire stations, we'd load in the names. Now I can right mouse click in my service area, bring up this context menu, and I can look at a lot of different layer properties for this. I can look at a general, layers, my source, okay, analysis settings. And I'm going to set my impedance is going to be minutes. I can also set it to be miles. But we talked about the five minute driving time. So my breaks are going to be five. And I'm looking at polygon generation here. So I can create these different polygons that overlap. We can look at uh, broken polygons so we can break them into like multiple rings like kind of like we did with buffering. I'm just going to leave everything for default now and I'll let you kind of play with it later. I'm going to click OK here. And then when I'm ready to go, I'm just going to click on the solve button. Okay, so what just happened here? Okay, well I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit here. Okay, but what you see here, this is the area that's within a five minute driving time of my new pizza shop in downtown uh, in uh, first floor Marytown Science Complex. You can see it kind of juts out really far in this direction because this goes around Alston Street, Route 55. It juts out pretty far in this direction here because this is going along 147, the downtown expressway. Okay, it doesn't go as far out in these areas here because these are city streets here. But you notice here, this isn't a perfect circle. Okay, it's going to be kind of elongated in certain directions where we're, we're able to travel further in that five minute time based on the speed limit, based on our formula distance equals rate times time. So, this is a really powerful tool here. You can imagine with, say, 20 fire stations, there are going to be a lot of, o of these overlapping polygons. And if I were you, I'd probably look at places where these polygons don't overlap or maybe do a little bit of research to see well, what's the optimal fire response time for something like this and look for these biggest gaps here. But this is a pretty simple example where we can calculate a service area here because in reality they're not going to be circles generated by a buffer tool. They're going to geographic reality is going to more mimic this here. So in conclusion here, network analysis is a really powerful tool here. We looked at it just a couple just one thing that we can do right here. But we did so because of good data preparation. And then when we brought it in, it was pretty easy to do. Okay, but we can also create facilities, routes, um, vehicle routing problems. So take advantage of these effective and powerful tools.